Hello, I'm Kwasi Kwarteng from London, reading classics. This is fabulous, but uh, I'm afraid I have to go. A loner who once turned to Chopin for solace. A long wait on the outside. Have you got a new job, Mr Kwarteng? But now at the heart of government, as a trusted ally of the Prime Minister. Kwasi Kwarteng, historian, intellectual and slayer of conventional thinking. A new chancellor charting a fresh course with tax cuts. Kwasi Kwarteng. Very good result. Or should I say Mr Chancellor? Very good result. No corresponding cuts in spending and with borrowing to fill the gap. Bold experiment or reckless gamble. Yeah, maybe shooting from the hip uh, might be, might be a, a good analogy. I don't think any Chancellor has taken on a harder uh, package of circumstances than him. He is certainly someone who is not going to be afraid of um, a big idea. It's a disastrous move. It's discredited orthodoxy, and I think it's morally reprehensible. Trinity Quante. Valérie Giscard d'Estaing. That's correct. Standing out at an outstanding university and supreme confidence even before he'd started. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll do very well, the teenager Tonian joked to an admissions tutor before his interview. Trinity College, one of the grandest and richest at Cambridge. But an illustrious son of a neighbouring college provides crucial clues into how Kwasi Kwarteng thinks a chancellor should act. King's College benefiting from the investment nous of John Maynard Keynes, Britain's most famous economist of the modern era. Keynes was repudiated by the right, but Kwasi Kwarteng studied him very carefully and was inspired by his writings to develop something of a gambler's streak. He was struck by Keynes's description of a chancellor as a chess player, brilliant at preventing opponents from going no more than a few moves ahead, was the Keynes view. What a missed opportunity, thought Quasi Quateng. Where's the flair? Why not deploy that most idiosyncratic of pieces on the board, the knight? And so Quateng is making daring moves. Decades of Treasury orthodoxy, which says that day-to-day -day spending should be funded in normal times out of taxes, is out of the window. His thing is jump the next fence. That's exactly his approach to politics. A political contemporary sees a Chancellor taking historically significant steps. I think it is uh, bold, confident stuff. Uh, and I think both the Prime Minister, Liz and Kwasi, understand that leading in these roles is about confidence, the market's confidence, public confidence in the economy. But it is also quite high risk, uh, and I don't think they would um, demure from that. I think they've understood that slow growth, post-pandemic, risk of recession requires bold action. I mean, in the end, the, toast, uh, the test is, can we make this seemingly inevitable recession short and shallow, not long and deep? The terrible thing is, I think this is an experiment which uh, won't impact on the 80,000 people who voted for Liz Truss in the uh, Conservative Party election. Labour sees this as a gamble too far. I think he's an ideologue who lives in a bubble, who really doesn't understand most ordinary people's lives, who has a sort of theoretical um, a brilliance but a total lack of pragmatism, which I think creates this chaotic set of policies. Always challenging established thinking, a noted and controversial book with contributions by the future Chancellor and Prime Minister. The book famously included a quote describing British workers as among the worst idlers in the world. I thought he might annoy Boris um, because he would, the, you know, there were comparisons. You know, he's obviously um, interested in the classics, interested in history, um, has a, um, he didn't quite have the same sense of destiny, I think. Probably. A mischievous editor giving Quasi Quateng a column 
to keep Boris Johnson on his toes. Sarah Sands remembers the future Chancellor challenging the status quo at high table for the Conservative Oakshot Society at Cambridge. You had to be brilliant and you had to be original and um, you mustn't be boring, so you can't just say pass the bread or something. Um, so he was one of the great performers um, during that period. Um, and he had this sort of intellectual confidence, um, loved ideas. One thing about Oakshot, um, as I understand him, was that uh, natural skeptic, didn't like state dogma, consider conservatism a sort of state of mind rather than um, uh, rather than ideological. Um, so he was sort of suspicious of, of um, state intervention. What I enjoyed and enjoy in knowing him is his relish of life. He's Fun company, but teasing friends with different political outlooks and history always on his mind. He happened to be here for dinner not long after the Brexit referendum. And I think he was the only Brexiteer round this table, uh, which was a table of academics, and um, asked to uh, say something about his position and in defence of his position. He actually likened it to the English Reformation. And he said that at the time Henry VIII brought that about, he, Henry, didn't know exactly what a Protestant England or Britain was going to look like, nor did his immediate descendants, and it took about a century of bloodshed. These are his words. But in the end, it all worked out, and Britain sailed on into its glorious future, which I thought was an interesting analogy. Emerging into the limelight, a new chancellor breaking new ground and a new partnership moving at speed to upend convention.